You're listening to Greater Good Radio Hawaii. Please visit us online at greatergoodradio.com. Today's guest is Mitch Dolier, President and CEO of the Kaneohe Ranch Company and President and CEO of the Harold K. L. Castle Foundation. Mitch is the man responsible for the revitalization of Victoria Ward and sell to general growth properties for $250 million. What are some of the important principles and lessons that you had learned from your Hawaiian Air mentors that carried you throughout your different positions that you're even currently carrying? Well, first, the first thing that I learned at Hawaiian Airlines was how good Hawaii's people are. And I didn't really know Hawaii's people, even though I'd lived here 19 and a half years. I kind of like I worked downtown, and I knew who was downtown, and I knew who I came back. I, I knew the financial world, but I didn't really know Hawaii's people. And I remember one day I was at baggage, the baggage services, and I had an older baggage service employee who basically threw bags all day come up to me and explain a stock trading method where – he made a lot of money every year, and it related to buying and selling Hawaiian Airlines stocks and public announcements. And I couldn't trade because I was an insider. But he had a pretty cool method of trading stock, and he was doubling his income every year by his little method playing the game on the side. And I said to myself, you know, if I'd have sat back in my office and not met this guy, I probably wouldn't have the highest opinion in the world of people that are baggage handlers at Hawaiian Airlines. But that was just one of many, many examples where the goodness and hardworking nature and, and actually intelligence of Hawaii's people rang through to me out of my Hawaiian Airlines experience. And I can't say enough today, and I couldn't say enough then, about how good the employees of Hawaiian Airlines are. I'm, I'm still in love with all those guys. How did you end up going to Victoria Ward then? Okay, what happened at Hawaiian Airlines is we got, we got close to – a goal we had set. We were trying to accomplish a Chapter 11 bankruptcy without filing. We didn't want to file. We wanted to try to negotiate our way through it with all the creditors. And essentially, we couldn't get it all the way done. And there were some guys that weren't from Hawaii that hung out, and it wasn't going to happen. Uh, and I didn't want to be in a bankruptcy, and I didn't leave law practice to run a bankrupt carrier. And it, and, it, and then running a bankrupt carrier had more of a, an aversion, more of a negative taint to it than it does today when almost every major carrier in, in the United States is bankrupt of, of all the legacy carriers. Uh, and so I resigned, and I thought I was going to go back to practice law. And I got some great advice from my wife. And Bambi said, hey, don't just go back and practice law because everybody thinks you did a better job than you think you did. And I was hard on myself because we didn't get the reorg done that I wanted. Uh, and, and she said, you need a sabbatical and your children haven't seen you for two years. And you fought when you're in your law firm for all your partners to have sabbaticals. So take a sabbatical and let your head clear. So we sat around and did a family meeting and decided on the places in the world we were going to go. And in between vacation number one and vacation number two, we came home to wash our clothes. And when we were home, I got a call from a member of the Victoria Ward board that said they wanted me to consider being CEO of Victoria Ward. And that's kind of physically and actually how that came about. So what did your family say at that point? Did they ask you, well, can we go on the second trip first? And what Bambi said at the time was, I didn't know what Victoria Award was at the time, but I knew you were going to take it from the sound in your voice. Uh, and it looked to me like a staggering opportunity. I mean, all you have to do is be on the water, off the South Shore, look in. You can see Alamoana and Waikiki on one side. You can see downtown on the other side, and you can say, whoa, something's, there's a big opportunity there. That opportunity was obvious to me. I had been on the Victoria Award board as well when I was at Hawaiian Airlines. So I knew about it. I knew they were in a CEO search. I didn't know how that was going, and I'd kind of disengaged for a while when I was taking my break. And board came to me and said, would I do it? Uh, we had already engaged as a board, Group 70, a planning firm, to start to work on an overall plan. So I knew some about that. Uh, and it was too good an opportunity to, to turn down. But that ward situation was not exactly a booming situation at that time, right? What, weren't occupancies... Well, Whoa. first thing first thing is it was really it was it was not financially unstable. It was not 
Uh, it, it had not lived up to all it could be, but it was financially stable. And one of the really interesting things about that experience, and, you, and I think about the two of them, uh, is that when I was at Hawaiian Airlines, I'd have to call a long time in advance and hope a banker would see me. When I was at Victoria Ward, the bankers would make house calls. They'd come to see me. They'd come to see me. And can I come see you at your house? And there's, there's a banker, if he's listening out there, that made a house, really did make a house call on me one Saturday morning. Uh, and so if Ward, when I started, was financially stable. In the beginning, and this is another one of those things, look at what you're going to do and do things in the right order. In the beginning, we spent a significant amount of time with the tenant community, with the community community, with our planners, and with consultants like engineers and architects and users like tenants or potential tenants getting a sense of what ward could and should be. And really what we realized was pretty simple. There wasn't any place that was a real place where all of us who live in Hawaii could walk around, see a show, and have a night out and go hang out. That sort of cool entertainment hangout place wasn't, wasn't here. And so there was an opportunity to execute that. Thanks for tuning in. Stay tuned for more on Greater Good Radio.